What's up everyone, me JP2 here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at level 50 Altaria in the Open Ultra League. Now Altaria has shown up in some of my videos in the Ultra League, and while most people just assume I run it because it's spicy, I actually run it because I actually believe it's good. Because it's a dragon flying type, and there's not many bulky dragon flying types. Like in the Ultra League, like mainly you'll see Dragonite, maybe like occasionally a Rayquaza, but that's only if the opponent's like really spicy. But, like, there's just not many bulky dragon flying types. That just means that, like, Pokemon like Swampert will still have play into, like, Shadow Dragonite. Because two Hydro Cannons will pretty much KO a Shadow Dragonite. Well, Altaria just tanks them easily. Because of that, I was thinking that Altaria could catch some opponents off guard. And it definitely did. So I was extremely happy about that. I'd also like to point out that battle submissions are open. I'll be putting a link to it in the description. And if you want to submit some battles, go ahead. I'll probably feature them. So, that's there as an option if you want me to feature your battles. Anyways, that's pretty much it, and let's hop into the battles. Alright, so hopping into the first battle, and we lead Altaria into Swampert. This is probably the best lead, and the opponent is just completely walled. The weird thing is that I've seen, like, barely any Swamperts actually switch out. It's, it's really weird, because, like, they're completely walled here, but they decide to stay in. My best bet is that they see the combat power disparity and just think it's a good matchup regardless. But they're just fully walled. We can go for a sky attack here. Sky attack will actually get a shield from them. And they're going to be able to make it to a move. And this move could be a sludge wave, they farmed up enough. But they end up going for an earthquake. That's fine, it's resisted as well. Swampert is completely walled here. We're going to go for another sky attack. And sky attack takes out the Swampert. They then come in with a Rayquaza, which is surprising and we're going to be able to go for a sky attack. This is how bulky Altaria is. It lives the Dragon Tails and gets both their shields and switch advantage. So yeah, the thing's insane. We're able to bring in Steelix though and the Rayquaza is walled. Even if they made it to a Dragon Ascent, I wouldn't shield. They go for a Breaking Swipe, no debuff for them. They go for a second Breaking Swipe and they might have gotten the debuff, but we switch out. In the back they have Heatran though, and we just have Chandelure, and up two shields, Chandelure is just prepared to crush everything, so we take that game. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Altaria into Empoleon. Now, the, th the thing about the Altaria versus Empoleon matchup is that Altaria hits for resisted with everything, while Altaria, well, Altaria is taking neutral from Drill Pack. The thing about this is the bulk disparity, just because of how bulky Altaria is, means that Altaria is actually almost able to make this matchup a tie. I think it actually is dependent on IVs, whether or not Altaria wins. So the opponent goes for a Drill Peck, and we're not going to be able to take this matchup because they shielded, but we'll be able to make it to a Moonblast, and Moonblast will be able to get them quite low. And while we do get farmed down, we're able to get a shield from them and give Chandelure basically the perfect farm. Now the opponent goes for Hydro Cannon, and we're going to be able to just incinerate farm them down. Now they're going to come in with, I think, a Jellicent, and no, they actually come in with a Giratina. And that, that's just going to be good because we're going to be able to bring in Steelix. And Steelix can destroy Giratina. In the back, they have Scissor. Now, this isn't the best, but it's still fine. Steelix can hit for neutral with Crunch here. And so we're going to go for the Psychic Fangs. Psychic Fangs will debuff their defense. And they're going to be able to outpace us to another move. But they do throw an alignment. And we're going to be able to just make it to a Crunch here. I throw one more Dragon Tail, being sure not to throw an alignment like they did. And we're actually going to go for another Psychic Fangs. At this point, Crunch will take them out, but I really wanted to see if I could get a snipe with Incinerate. So they go for a Night Slash, I switch into Chandelure, and the opponent is able to defer the Incinerate onto the Giratina. But we have back-to-back -back Flame Charges here. The opponent has to throw a move. We go for the Flame Charge, we grab a Shield, and it was a CMP tie. Now, it, it is dependent on whether Chandelure lives this, and we barely live it, so we actually do get to go for a second Flame Charge. Flame Charge does some okay damage, and this just means that Steelix will be able to do a lot of damage with the Crunch. Now, they're going to be able to outpace us here by a bit because I overfarmed. They're going to go for the Dragon Claw, and I'm going to go for the Crunch. Crunch will not take them out here, but it should get them quite low. We're almost able to farm them down, but they switch into Scissor, deferring the Dragon Tail. And that was a smart play because if they can, if they can take us out with three Dragon Breaths, they'll take that game. My Steelix lives it, so we're able to take that game. I'm thinking the next battle, and another amazing lead, Altaria into Verizion. The opponent immediately switches into Greninja, and I have to stay in because my back two Pokemon are both weak to water. On the bright side, Altaria can just easily take care of Greninja, 
especially when they go for a hydro cannon because hydro cannons resisted and so we're gonna be able to go for a sky attack sky attack i assume gets shielded and it does and they're gonna go for another move altaria is insanely bulky so we don't even have to shield it they go for a night slash and they don't get a boost so i still don't have to shield water shuriken does not have much fast move pressure so they go for another night slash no boost and i'm gonna go for a sky attack right here i didn't want to risk them making it to another night slash even if it would have kept even shields but then in the back they have charizard and it does just look like i can bring in steelix tank a blast burn and then switch into chandelure and despite not running shadow ball shadow ball would be nice but with just the flame charge we should be able to just take them out they then switch into the Rizian though and with the incinerate buff we're actually just going to be able to fully farm them down they farmed up a lot though i'm worried it's a stone edge so i do shield but they go for a leaf blade so it's fairly obvious i don't have stone edge i can save the shield they're gonna go for the leaf blade and i can just get a full farm down they make it to another leaf blade which is unfortunate but my chandelure lives this now they come back in with the charizard and these flame charges should force shields we go th for the first one and they shield the first one they probably assumed it was a shadow ball but since i just managed to buff my attack that means the second one does more i switch into steelix go for the psychic fangs psychic fangs won't take him out but it should get him pretty low and they're gonna be able to make it to a move here but this is just a dragon claw they do not have enough energy they go for the dragon claw steelix tanks it easily and we just get the farm down hopping into the next metal and we lead altaria into polyrath now despite this being a dragon flying type into a water fighting type polyrath's access to icy wind means that this is a slightly negative matchup for Altaria. Regardless, Altaria can put in work. We're going to be able to get a shield to the sky attack, and they're going to be able to, to go for an icy wind, but Altaria is bulky. It lives it. Like, I don't think Dragonite would, but Altaria does. Now, they have to go for a second move here, and I just decided to just to get taken out by it. I can bring in Chandelure, and I should be able to make it to a few flame chargers. Now, they throw right before we make it to the first flame charge, and I'm shielding just in case it's a scald. They go for the icy wind, though, and I could have gone for an energy ball and just taken him out, but I didn't want to reveal that I had it. So I just go for the flame charge. Flame charge just doesn't take him out though. And they barely make it to another move. This is unfortunate, but we should be fine. And in the back, they have Talon Flames. So this game just looks like it's over. Now, if I can get a shield here, this would be nice. And now Steelix might be able to do something, but in the back, they have Reggie Steel. And yeah, we're just not going to be able to win. If, if the Registeel just makes a mistake, like goes for a Zap Cannon or something, trying to debuff us, then we might be able to win because we have a lot of energy and our, our Switch Clocks are slightly delayed. But that's the only real win con I see. I have to make it to two Psychic Fangs before they're actually able to make it to another Focus Blast. But that looked like a CMP tie, and it was. This Focus Blast is just going to do way too much to the Steelix. They go for the Focus Blast, and I'm going to actually be able to bring in Chandelure here, and I will be able to go for a Flame Charge. And Flame Charge will take out the Registeel, but it's just the perfect farm down for Talonflame, unfortunately. And they're going to leave with a move, so I'm just going to concede the match. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Altaria into Pidgeot. Now, this is a pretty good lead. Well, Pidgeot can debuff us. Dragon Breath being a one-turn move guarantees at least one damage per turn, so it's going to be able to do pretty good. They go for the Feather Dance, and I should be able to make it to a Moonblast before they make it to another move, and I go for the Moonblast. Moonblast still would do some nice damage, and the opponent does commit a shield. No debuff for us, unfortunately, but that's fine. I wasn't really looking for one. It doesn't matter too much. The opponent goes for another Feather Dance, and now we're heavily debuffed. But look, they can go for another Feather Dance, but Altaria still lives this. I did mention Altaria is fairly bulky. Now, that Feather Dance doesn't even get a debuff because we're completely debuffed, and this Moonblast should not get shielded, but it does get them into the red health. So... If they had not gotten any shield, like if they had no shields left, we would have actually taken that. Nevertheless, we can bring in Steelix, tank the Feather Dance, bring in Chandelure and get the Snipe. They now bring in a Jellicent, and this is where I'd prefer to have Shadow Ball, because Shadow Ball does get same type attack bonus, but Energy Ball is fine. We go for the Energy Ball, it does a lot of damage, they're going to go for a move. I just decide that Steelix can hopefully take this game, because Steelix is strong, but in the back they have Verizian. So... This isn't looking good, but with Psychic Fangs, Steelix can put in work. We're able to hit for super effective with Psychic Fangs, and I am going to commit a shield here, because Sacred Swords still do some damage. Now, I can go for another Psychic Fangs, and I'm hoping they'll shield this. Because if they shield this, then this ne next Psychic Fangs will do even more. Now, the problem is that I will lose CMP on the next one, because it takes three for them to get to a Sacred Sword, and I'm three off. 
So instead of that, I'm gonna go for the overfarm. They go for the sacred sword. Steelix will live this though. And since we live it, I'm expecting them to switch out. They bring in the Jellicent. I overfarm by two, being careful not to let them make it to a move. And I go for the Crunch. Crunch will take them out. And the Verizian is three off. So Steelix is barely able to take this game for us. So Psychic Fangs will take out the Verizian. And we'll be able to take that game. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Altaria and a Guzzlord. Now, this is just a matchup where Guzzlord's immense bulk is just going to be able to beat Altaria. And they're going to go for a move here. Now, Altaria does tank any one move, and they go for a crunch, hoping for a debuff. They don't get it. I'm only making it to one move, though, so I'm going for the Moonblast. Moonblast, pretty obviously going to get a shield, and sometimes that's all you can take. Altaria being able to get a shield advantage is good enough. Also, the Guzzlord just will give Steelix a massive energy advantage, and Steelix up energy is a big threat. They go for a crunch, no debuff, and we just farm down. They then bring in Skeleturge, though, and this is where running crunch is nice. Now, they're, I'm at enough energy for an Earthquake, so I expect them to shield, and they do. And I'm, I don't get a debuff, unfortunately, but this next crunch will still be able to do a lot of damage to the Skeleturge regardless. And they're going for a move here. At this point, I'm just, gonna, I'm just thinking Chandelure can sweep, but they go for a Disarming Voice. And now, we're going to be able to make it to a Psychic Fangs. Psychic Fangs will not take out the bulky Skeleturge, and that's fine, because Chandelure can come in, and we get to deny all their energy, and in the back, they have Gardevoir. They're not winning this. It looks like they're still going to try and play it out, though. We can go for the Energy Ball. Energy Ball rocks the Gardevoir, and we're able to take him out. Hopping into the next battle, and we lead Altaria into Escavalier. Now, despite this being a Dragon-type into a uh, Steel-type, the Escavalier is the one that's in the bad matchup, because we can hit for neutral with Sky Attack. Well, they can't really hit with, for neutral with anything that they have. The th only thing they can hit for neutral with is Aerial Ace or Acid Spray, and both of those are non-stab and not the highest power. We can go for a Sky Attack in the Escav, and we get the Snipe with Chandelure. If they went for another Megahorn here, then Chandelure will tank it, and the Incinerate will register and take him out. They then bring in a Giratina, and that looked like a CMP tie. I'm going for the Flame Charge, I do have enough for a Shadow Ball, so they actually do end up shielding it, which is perfect. Now, we're gonna just be able to let this move go through, and Steelix should be able to clean up this game, because we'll probably just be able to fully farm around the Giratina, considering they're not gonna really be able to hit for much damage, and so we're just gonna go for a crunch into the Giratina eventually, because I don't think I can fully farm down here without getting into the yellow, but that's fine. Now I am gonna go for the crunch here. Crunch should do some nice damage, and it does get them pretty close to the red. The Dragon Tails will get a farm down, and I assume they're trying to make it to a Shadow Force or something, but in the back they have Ampharos, and yeah, they're not winning that. Hopping into the next battle, absolutely awful lead. We lead Altaria into Aurorus. I have to switch out into Chandelure. They're gonna outpace me to a Meteor Beam, and I have to shield this, because if it is a Meteor Beam, we'll just get Annihilated. Then, they then bring in Groudon of all things, so I don't even know what to say. I respect the spice, but it's not gonna do, well, like, it's not good for my Chandelure. They go for a Precipice Blades, I would probably take out a couple Chandelures, and I'm gonna wait out my Switch Clock a bit, but then I'm just gonna bring in Altaria, because I don't, I realize that I don't want their Switch Clock to come up either, because I don't want them to be able to save the Groudon for Steelix. They go for a Precipice Blades into Altaria, Altaria tanks it easily, and they're gonna be able to make it to another one. Altaria still tanks this, but it is gonna do some nice damage. Does get Altaria into the yellow, they switch back into the Auroras though, and that means we can align it against Steelix. Now, Steelix just destroys Aurorus, because we'll be able to debuff them with our Psychic Fangs, and Psychic Fangs will, won't do much. We'll be able to, to debuff their defense, so we should just be able to fully farm them down here. They probably will be able to make it to one more Weather Ball after this, but Steelix lives that anyways. They do make it to one more Weather Ball, but it's not like Steelix is going to get taken out by it. We live the Weather Ball, and we go for the Dragon Tail and take him out. In the back, though, they have Polyreths. This is not looking good. I have to go for the back-to-back -back Psychic Fangs, and hopefully I can grab a shield, but they still don't have to shield this. Despite their defense being debuffed, Psychic Fangs won't do much. However, our Switch Clock comes up, I bring in Altaria, and I go for the Sky Deck. This will grab their shield, and they have to make it to back-to-back -back moves, and they don't. We make it to a second Sky Attack, so all that farm is extremely useful, and it looks like the opponent just force quit the app. Honestly, I can't blame them. They get taken out, and the Groudon's way too low to do anything, even if they were still actually actively trying to win. 
So we just farm down with Altaria, and we take that game. Hopping to the next battle, and we lead Altaria into Venusaur. This is another amazing lead. The opponent switches out into Swampert, and so I don't really know what they're thinking, but this is still not a good matchup. They go for the Hydro Cannon. Altaria tanks that insanely well. Like this thing, when I first tried it, I was like, dang, this thing's actually insanely bulky. They let the Sky Tag go through, and it's going to get the Swampert pretty low. Now, they're going to go for another move, and the Hydro Cannon is not going to do much damage to us, and we're just going to be able to fully farm them down. They do make it to one more Hydro Cannon, but Altaria is at no risk of being taken out, so we're going to be able to farm them down. They then come in with Wall Rain, though, and this is just not the best for Altaria, but it's amazing for Chandelure. Now, the opponent's only hope is to land an Earthquake and just destroy Chandelure, but I'm not even risking that because if we would still tank a Frenzy Plant if we had no shields. The opponent realizes that the game's over after the Earthquake gets shielded, so they give up. Hopping to the next battle, and we lead Altaria into Kanto Muck. Now this does show how bulky Altaria is, because even though this is one of the most neutral matchups of all, the opponent can go for a Thunder Punch, and Altaria tanks it easily. We'll be able to go for a Sky Attack though, and Sky Attack will do some nice damage. Now Sky Attack gets them past the yellow, and it does look like we're outpacing them for damage. Now the opponent does catch the Sky Attack onto Wall Rain, but that's fine. We go for the Sky Attack, and now we can switch into Chandelure. They should outpace us by one to the Earthquake, but it's fine. I decided to go for the extra Incinerate instead, and they do go for the Earthquake, which is perfect. The opponent keeps farming. I'm going to be able to go for another Flame Charge into the Wall Rain, and they just let it go. The opponent brings back in the muck, and they do have a move here. If this is a Dark Pulse, I do get taken out, and I do have some energy, so I should be able to force these shields right back with the Flame Charges. So I'm going to be able to go for Flame Charge number one, and I will outpace the Conk Elder before they make it to another move. So I'll be able to go for the second Flame Charge, and this will guarantee a shield, because this will take them out. Now look at the Incinerate damage. That just almost that almost takes off the Conk Elder from that range. They even go for a Stone Edge. And the thing is, they're too low now. Altaria just gets a farm down, and we take that game. Overall, Altaria is actually insanely strong in my opinion. While it does kind of rely on not being just hard walled by like fairy or ice types, as long as it's not gonna be hitting for resisted damage with dragon breaths, it is able to put in a lot of work, simply because it can outbolt quite a few of the Ultra League Pokemon, and Dragon Breath does usually hit for neutral. Now, if it gets aligned against the Charmer, it just loses. But that's pretty much the same thing for all dragons, so I don't really hold it against it. So the thing worked insanely well. I'd also like to take a moment to remind everyone that battle submissions are still open. So if you want to submit some battles, maybe I'll feature them. Go ahead. Anyways, that looks like it's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Merry Christmas.